and in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. What a joy it is having you come into our space here where we can minister the Word of God to you. And we're coming to you today with a message that has been preached somewhere around the world. Something like Santiago. Don't know where he is. I just pray that you'll be blessed, inspired, healed, delivered, set free, fear gone, faith arise, and that you will receive today from this preached word just what you need. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. I'm sure something might have run across your spirit in your heart or your mind about something God has done for you. And just able to take the next breath, you ought to just say, Lord, thank you. Yes, yes, thank you for all that you've done for me. It is time for the word of God. I would say, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth. But the word of God shall stand forever. Bishop wanted me to share with you on today that he said he appreciates the prayers of all of the saints and the family that have been praying for him. Amen. That he said that he would he want your prayers continually. He'll be back in the pulpit hopefully on next Sunday. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. While you're clapping, just reach over and touch your neighbor right now where you're standing. We just want to continue to pray for him. Can we do that just for a moment? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for all of your goodness and kindness. We thank you for being our healer. You said in your word that by your stripes we are healed. So we stand on your word. When nothing else fails, your word shall always stand. And so, Father, we pray right now for our bishop, for his family, for his health right now. We pray that as the anointing falls, that it will fall upon him and continually heal his body. We say thank you in advance and thank you by faith for a heal leader in Jesus' name. Everybody said... Amen. Amen. The man of God that is going to minister to us on this morning, many of us and most of us, and not all of us know this man of God. He has been a friend for this ministry for many years, all the way back into the time in West Virginia. God has blessed him to minister all across the globe, but he's here this morning to minister to us the word of the Lord. We have a video biography for you, but when it is over, we're going to ask that all of you stand as the man of God comes to bring unto us the bread of life. And that will be none other than our very own Bishop Luther Blackwell. Bishop Luther Blackwell is the senior pastor of Mega Church in Cleveland, Ohio. Traveling extensively as a lecturer, teacher, and guest speaker, Bishop has been featured in some of the country's most prestigious and life-changing spiritual conferences and grace pulpits of the same magnitude. Bishop Blackwell started Mega Church 13 years ago in Cleveland, Ohio. Known as the pastor's pastor, Bishop Blackwell has extensive training, both academically and in the pulpit. Bishop Blackwell graduated with a bachelor's degree in music education from the Conservatory of Music at Baldwin Wallace College in Berea, Ohio. He also received a master's and doctor's degree of biblical studies from Christian Leadership University in Elma, New York as well as a Doctor of Ministry degree from Vision Christian College in Ramona, California. Bishop Luther Blackwell and his wife, Lois, reside in the greater Cleveland area with their family. Ladies and gentlemen, let us receive at this time, Bishop Luther Blackwell. Thank you. 
Thank you. And in that day, and in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. Let's try it again. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. One more time, give it your best shot. Hey, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord your clap, offering of praise. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. While you're standing, I do honor the set men of the house, the eminent Bishop Thomas Dexter Jakes and First Lady Sarita. Amen. Thank God for them. Ministry that's touching the globe. You might be seated. What a joy it is to be here. I also honor Senior Associate Pastor Lawrence Robinson and First Lady Beverly. Amen. Always good to come back to Potter's House. Thank you for tolerating me so many years, time after time after time after time. We do not take standing in this pulpit for light, lightly because it is a ministry that touches people around the world. And uh, I just thank God for so honoring me to be with you and thank you for receiving me. And for you who don't, thank you for acting like you do. I appreciate it very, 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 very much. Amen. Normally when I leave my pulpit, it's not unusual for me to ask a young man whom God has raised up to come and cover for me. But I couldn't do that this time because he decided to come and be here at Potter's House. I want to introduce you to Bishop Eric Kincaid Clark, son of, a son of mine, spiritual son. Amen. Been under my covering for about 12, 13 years or so. Phenomenal young man. So we brought some more help from the dog pound in Cleveland and uh, with Pastor Michael Exum. Amen. Uh, thank God for these Cleveland boys. Amen. I want to do a test before I announce my texts. I'm going to say a word. And then I'm going to count to three, and whatever comes to your mind, I want you just to shout it out. Here's the word. Samson. One, two, three. Isn't that amazing? that the only thing I heard was Delilah. <laughs> With that in mind, let's turn our Bibles to the book of Judges. <clears throat> the 15th chapter, reading verses 11 through 13, no, I'm reading verses 11 through 19. So if you'll stand and let's honor the word of God from the book of Judges, chapter 15, 11 through 19. That reads, so 3,000 men of Judah went down to get Samson at the cave in the rock of Etam. They said to Samson, don't you realize the Philistines rule over us? What are you doing to us? But Samson replied, I only did to them what they did to me. But the men of Judah told him, we have come to tie you up and hand you over to the Philistines. All right, Samson said, but promise that you won't kill me yourselves. We will only tie you up and hand you over to the Philistines. They replied, we won't kill you. So they tied him up with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his bands loosed from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand and took it and slew 
a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass, have I slain a thousand men. And when he finished his boasting, he threw away the jawbone, and the place was named Jawbone Hill. Samson was now very thirsty, and he cried out to the Lord, You have accomplished this great victory by the strength of your servant. Must I now die of thirst and fall into the hands of these pagans? So God caused water to gush out of a hollow in the ground at Lehi, and Samson was revived as he drank. Then he named that place the spring of the one who cried out, and it is still in Lehi to this day. Would you put your hands on that text, and let's pray. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would hear me, Luther Blackwell, you know my name, and I pray, Father, that you would show up today, anoint me, let this be a divine appointment, and let someone today find the very answer to the questions that have been troubling them. Let others be inspired, refreshed, blessed, motivated, and uplifted. Bless thy word unto our hearts and glorify your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and everyone said, amen. You might be seated. I want to speak from the 15th verse that states, and he found a new jawbone of an ass. I want to talk about the new jawbone of an ass. Would you say that with me? The new. Say it again. The new. You don't have to worry about the profanity if that's your concern at all. That is not the case. The new jawbone of an ass. I was so led this year and so impressed by the Holy Spirit, and I'm still dealing with this subject in my church. In looking at people who have been with God year after year after year, in looking at those who are endeavoring to strive and reach their goals and destiny, in looking at people who are trying to attain and trying to reach and trying to get somewhere, and yet they're troubled by things of the past and by failures of the past and failings of the past, and those failings and failures are hindering them from getting where they need to get in their destiny and their purpose. I was so moved to begin dealing with and teaching on failure, how to overcome it, how to get through it, understanding its purpose, understanding why God allows it to happen. Failure is one of those things that is common to every one of us. May I ask the question, has anyone here ever failed? Seven or eight of you, I see, raised your hand. <laughs> uh, has anyone here ever failed big time? I mean, big time failure. You, you know how to really do it right. <laughs> and it's these failures that the enemy uses to, uh, he, he used to, to always beat us on the head, to keep us back from going to, as a, is a common phrase, the next level. I love the book of Judge, uh, Judges. Let me see, how many of you have read the book of Judges in the last three months? It's not a book that we gravitate to when we want to get a word from the Lord. Ooh, the book of Judges. No, not at all. Sometimes we may go years without reading it unless we are traveling through the, book of the, the books of the Bible. Thank you so much for tuning in to us. And I pray that you have been blessed and inspired, delivered, set free, and healed. If you have been, why don't you sit down and send your gift to us, $22. 
what I'm asking you to give. That will denote what God is going to do in your life for the rest of this year. Be blessed. Hopefully we'll see you on tomorrow.